In this video we'll be looking at design studies in SOLIDWORKS uh, and in order to run a design study in SOLIDWORKS uh, you have to have first created a successful simulation. In this case we've run a static simulation on this I-beam. Uh, you can see the supports at either end of the I-beam here uh, just marked out with these red areas and then where the uh, force has been applied in the centre section here. Uh, and if we look at some of the results from that simulation, so if we look at the stress plot here, uh, we can see that we've got uh, some higher stress areas at either end and around the, the loading point in the centre. Uh, but what we're really interested in in this case is a factor of safety plot. So we've added this plot in. You don't get that plot by default, but you can uh, add it in from, from the results menu. And you can see that we've also annotated the minimum uh, result for factor of safety throughout the part. So you can see that the minimum is uh, around the support here and the minimum is around 1. Uh, now that's not acceptable for our particular case here. We're aiming for a minimum factor of safety of 2. So uh, we're about halfway there. So what we're going to do uh, we could obviously go back into the I-beam design and we could uh, we could bulk up the thickness or make the I-beam a little bit taller. Uh, there's any number of ways that we could change it to try and get this minimum factor of safety up to the level that we're looking for. But rather than do that manually and keep running the simulation to check, uh, we can have SOLIDWORKS do all that uh, monotonous work for us uh, with a little bit of setup. So if we want to start setting up the design study, uh, you go down to the simulation tab that uh, you're currently using and you right click and go to create new design study. And it brings you into the design study setup uh, menu here. So if we just uh, make that a little bit larger. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to work down through this list. Uh, there's three broad areas that we're going to populate with some data and then we, when we've done that we can run the design study. So the first one is variables. So if we click on the down arrow, click on add parameter and then you can see that what's happened in the display window here uh, is all the featured dimensions for all the features that created this part have all become visible. Uh, and what that means is we can start picking them uh, and the reason that we're picking them is we're going to uh, allow SOLIDWORKS to vary those dimensions within a certain range uh, to try and satisfy our constraint, which is our uh, minimum of two uh, factor of safety within the part. So uh, if we just select the overall height here, which is currently 150, so we click on that and you can see that the first row in this table has been populated with that dimension. So you can see the value is initially 150. Uh, and also what it's prompting us to do, you can see the flashing cursor in this first cell, is give it a descriptive name that will mean something to us so that we can select that uh, for use within the study. So I think a good name for that particular dimension would be height, because it's the overall height of the part. Uh, and then if you press enter after you've given it a name, you get uh, another row in the table. Uh, so you want to select the first cell in that row and then continue to select another dimension. So we'll select the width, this 120 value. So you can see that that 120 has come in to the table and again we're going to want to give that a name. So we'll give it the name width and again if we press enter we get a new row. Uh, for some reason SOLIDWORKS doesn't select the new row so it's quite easy to forget to select the new row yourself. Uh, click on a new value and that new value will, will overwrite what you've just entered. So just be wary of that. You want to select the new row after it's been created. And I think the last thing that will allow it to vary uh, will be the thickness uh, of this material here. So that's uh, that's that value there. So we'll, uh, we'll label that as thickness. So if press enter one more time, press OK and you can see in this variables entry box now it's pulled the uh, the first row of the table in there already 
uh, but we're going to want to add in the other rows of the table as well. So we'll add in the thickness and we're doing this just with the drop down arrow here and then we'll add the width as well. So we've got all three entries in the table. So now what we have to do is we have to decide on the range that we're going to allow it to modify those values in and we're going to have to give it a step size that we're going to allow it to jump by. So that's your uh, increments if you like. So the height. Uh, what was the height initially? So you can double click on the part and try and find some of these dimensions again. So the height is initially 150 mil. Uh, given that we failed currently I would say that we don't really want to let that drop much lower than it is currently so maybe put 140 in there but we do want to give the uh, program the option of, of increasing that so we'll leave that uh, maximum at uh, let's say 240 uh, we'll not play with the step size yet we'll come back to that uh, so the thickness the thickness was initially at 20 we'll allow it to jump uh, upwards I think but not downwards so we'll put a minimum of 20 so it can't drop below its current value and uh, 30 is maximum that'll be fine uh, we maybe change that step size down a bit maybe change that to 5 uh, width of the part overall width uh, again I don't think we'll allow it to drop it too much we'll maybe put 110 in there but we will allow it to increase it quite a lot so we'll maybe put 200 in that box there so you can see as I'm playing around with these ranges the total number of active scenarios changes so you can see I'll play with the step size here so if we reduce the step size say down to 10 and then click out of that cell uh, this jumps up and that's because as I'm reducing the increments down uh, that's increasing the number of uh, design variations that SOLIDWORKS can possibly make to this part so we'll just bump that back up a bit because uh, 170 is a, is a rather large number of uh, design studies uh, we'll maybe bump that up a little bit further to 20 54 is not bad 54 is a reasonable number of design uh, scenarios so yeah, we've filled in all the variables. So we've we've told SolidWorks what we're going to allow it to vary in the model and the ranges and the steps that we're going to allow it to vary within. So the next thing that we have to do is add a constraint. So in our uh, particular uh, study, the constraint is that we, uh, we want the uh, minimum factor of safety in the part to be uh, no less than 2. So we're going to add a sensor to the part to sense the factor of safety uh, and that f that data is going to come out of the simulation so in this drop down box you're going to want to select simulation data the next drop down box we don't want the pure stress we want the factor of safety and we want the minimum throughout the model uh, so that's okay so we can okay that so we've got that minimum factor of safety we want it uh, greater than and we want to enter 2 in there because we said we wanted a minimum factor of safety that was no lower than 2 so that's that one set up the goal for this part uh, if you think of the factor of safety as a, as a yes no question it either satisfies uh, our level of 2 or it does not satisfy and it has failed uh, the goal is a more sort of soft uh, uh, constraint or goal so we're going to say we want to minimize the mass of the part but this isn't a pass or fail question it's more uh, prefer the lighter uh, solutions over the more heavy solutions so yeah we're going to add a goal uh, and we're going to pull this data out of the mass properties for the part mass is already selected in the next drop down list the only thing that we have to select uh, is is the solid body that we want to uh, monitor the mass of so in this case we only have one solid body in the window it's, it's the I-beam itself and as you can see as I roll over it it wants to uh, highlight so I'll select that 
you can see that's in there and it's given us uh, the initial value of the mass of that part so if we OK that so what do we want to do with that mass we want to minimize it uh, there are other options in there if you wanted to maximize the mass or you wanted to hit an exact value you can do that but we want to minimize in this part so that's it we set everything up in the design study we know that it's going to uh, run the simulation 54 times if possible uh, so the only thing left to do is run so if we run that so this is the finished design study and what you get when the design study finishes is a number of columns shown in the display here uh, obviously that corresponds to the number of scenarios that it has been run uh, and you've got these red columns which are uh, scenarios which have failed your uh, your constraint that you put in so in our case that was a minimum factor of safety of two so you can see in the factor of safety rows uh, these are all below two therefore they've been highlighted as red and they've failed uh, and on the left hand side here uh, you've got your uh, initial values uh, which correspond in our case to the height, the thickness and the width uh, as they were in initially and you've got a column that's been picked from all of these studies which is the optimal values uh, so that'll be uh, in our case uh, factor of safety which is uh, greater than or equal than 2 minimum factor of safety that is uh, a mass which is the minimum of all the studies that succeeded uh, and then values that satisfy that so uh, if you want to uh, use those values going forward you just uh, click on the column and you can see that the part modifies itself to satisfy these new uh, new dimensions uh, so that's it really that's uh, how to use design studies to take some of the uh, laborious work out of uh, using simulation and modifying the part and coming back in and using simulation again and modifying the part so the machines uh, much better suited to do that uh, rather than you manually uh, going through the steps uh, of the uh, simulation and trying to modify the part accordingly so what you can do now uh, now that you've got these optimum values is you could run a second study but you could focus the second study more tightly around these optimum values uh, and you'd reduce the increment size so you're sort of uh, honing in on a, a better and better design that uh, more satisfies your your needs uh, so that's it that's design studies